At this time, it's my pleasure to introduce you to you, Megan Marabito, this year's salutatorian. Family, friends, faculty, and fellow graduates. Today, we are here to acknowledge and celebrate the class of 2015's completion of high school and transition into the next phase of life. Many of us are excited to move on, but we wonder what our future will look like. What if I told you that 30 years from now, we will be in World War III, or that there will be worldwide drought, or that the United States will no longer exist? Would you believe me? These are just a few versions of the future envisioned by our senior class. To give you a little backstory, I should explain that this year, in order to coincide with our class theme of making history, the yearbook staff decided to ask the senior class for predictions regarding the state of the world in 30 years, a time frame which would have given our generation plenty of time to make history. As co-editor of the yearbook, I conducted the majority of the survey and was astounded by some of the replies. Though there were several optimistic predictions regarding technology, medicine, and human rights, the number of seemingly apocalyptic futures truly affected and concerned me. What struck me most was the overwhelming cynicism behind these predictions. I believe that as the up-and-coming generation, we have a responsibility to address the economic, political, social, and ethical issues of our time. Cynicism only serves to smother our potential to affect a necessary change. We must fight the cynicism which is consuming so many young people and instead embrace the optimism which will empower us to fulfill our duty to the world and to ourselves. There is an overwhelming belief that to be optimistic is to be naive and unrealistic. I know this from personal experience. It seemed to me that throughout high school I was labeled as naive simply because I have an optimistic and hopeful attitude. In contrast to my outlook, many of my peers seemed overly cynical for their age. And why shouldn't they be cynical? For most of us, our earliest experience with world news was the constant coverage of 9-11 during our first week of nursery school. Since then, the information generation has felt the double-edged sword of their era. Due to 24-7 news and social media coverage of natural disasters, wartime violence, race riots, terrorism, school shootings, hate crimes, threats of nuclear war, domestic violence, and so on, our generation has been overwhelmed by an onslaught of negativity. While seeing gruesome images or reading of injustice can be a source of motivation, 18 years of the constant barrage has left many feeling powerless to make any difference at all. This feeling of powerlessness causes us to use cynicism as a wall of defense, one which allows us to believe that nothing can be solved, thus absolving us of responsibility. In truth, cynicism is the denial of the possibility of a solution under the guise of accepting reality. In the words of Ken Burns, we too often make choices based on the safety of cynicism, and what we're led to is a life not fully lived. Cynicism is fear, and it's worse than fear. It's active disengagement. We are at a crucial point in history. All around us, there are numerous human rights and equality movements, including but not limited to race, gender, and LGBTQ. Each of these movements holds the potential to completely change the nature of human interactions. Just over the course of our senior year, we have seen many protests waged, legal actions taken, and individuals speaking out in response to these issues. The dialogue regarding racial equality has been reopened in order to address the remnants of racism in our country. The United Nations, along with many other organizations and individuals, are working to solidify gender equality. 
Just yesterday, the U.S. Supreme Court declared same-sex marriage legal nationwide. <laughs> We have seen much positive change over the past couple of years, but the fight is not over. Now it is our turn to take the initiative to bring these issues to justice, as well as seek solutions to the problems we will face in the future. In order to continue to make progress, we must have hope that we will reach this better future. This generation has the opportunity to make true positive change to make history, and not just by printing it on a t-shirt or painting it on a board. But first, we must get out of our own cynical way. In the words of Ted Kennedy, on the occasion of his brother, Robert Kennedy's death, some believe there is nothing one man or woman can do in, against the enormous array of the world's ills. Yet many of the world's great movements of thought and action have flowed from the work of a single man. Let us take a look back at those before us who have caused major change, as we can and must now do. They were not successful because they saw that the world was full of problems. They were successful because they dared to find solutions. One of the clearest examples of this is the civil rights movement of the 1960s. The efforts of the people involved not only laid the groundwork for future movements, but also demonstrated that the key to success is hope and determination to reach one's goal. Even after their ancestors faced centuries of oppression, even though they were met with violence and hatred, brave African Americans stood up for the rights they deserved as citizens of the United States, for the rights they deserved as human beings. Those individuals did not let the past prevent them from attempting to make a better future. They did not resign themselves to feelings of powerlessness. Instead, they banded together, participated in peaceful protests, and sang out with all their might, we shall overcome. This is not to say that hope and optimism are all that is needed for success. For true change, we need hard work. So we will work and struggle and sometimes fail, but it is hope which will help us up again to continue the fight. In the words of Martin Luther King Jr., we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. <coughs> to the families, faculty, and community members, I extend my sincere thanks on behalf of the class of 2015. To my friends and fellow graduates, I wish each and every one of you the best of luck. As you make your journey forward from Norwich High School, do not lose hope in yourself or the world. And remember, cynicism is a response to powerlessness, and we are not powerless. Thank you and congratulations class of 2015.